So not only will this next lady run your Zoom room, she will tell a few jokes and steal hearts. She's adorable. She's funny. We work together at the Palm Springs Comedy Festival. Subscribe to Liar Comedy Group right here on YouTube to see more of the very funny and extremely talented. She can she can program shit, fucking millennial. Give it up for Christina Ceballos. So, so I have a guest. <laughs> Sounds kind of basic and generic that I call her tech services, but that's often <laughs> what the Zoom show says. She runs our liar comedy shows and she has so much more. It turns out she's hysterical and obviously beautiful and has a lot of things going on by way of podcasts and other shows that she is both running as tech services and starring in. I can't even begin to say what is going on with this young lady. I so adore her. Please give it up for Christina and uh, let's find out a little bit about her. Like, why don't you just fill my fans in and my fans come from all walks of life. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Sally. Thanks for having me on here. I feel so special now. You're like one of the cool kids. <laughs> no, no, I have known your boyfriend for so long. And when he met you, I was like so happy. I was like, dude, she's hot. So her boyfriend is Ed Rose Jen. Okay. <laughs> and you were one of the first people that I met in his life because I came to that. I came to the Pig and Whistle for an open mic on that first weekend. He was like, you yeah. want to see me do comedy? I was like, hell yeah. I want to see this handsome dude do comedy. Are you kidding? <laughs> I remember you from that first day and I was like, dude. You know, like she, <laughs> you know, I was, uh, I was very much the Yenta, the Yenta in the situation. Yes, so. you were the Yenta. You <laughs> manifested me and I came up. <laughs> I pretty much feel that way. I'll take all the credit. Tell me, oh my God, who is fucking bugging me? While somebody is bugging me, tell me a little bit about where you were born and what your background is, because my fans are going to want to know. Okay, um, I was born and raised in San Diego, California, so just a little bit more down south, closer to the border. Um, yeah, I grew up, I went to uh, San Diego State, and there I majored in film, and I also was a minor in theater. So just growing up, I did... Um, you know, I loved theater. I loved acting. I loved anything having to do with movies. So I just went anything that had to deal with entertainment, I was interested in. And I kind of dabbled in kind of everything. Like I wrote, um, you know, I took like filmmaking classes. I did screenwriting classes. I did editing classes. I mean, but what I did was my major is basically it was kind of like a custom major that they had come up with where you learn how to critique films. So I always tell people like after going through four years of that, like anything you watch is kind of ruined because when you have that eye, you have to take yourself out of there. It's so weird. Like even like watching porn, you're like, oh, that camera angle was nice. And you're like, no, 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 this is not what I'm here for. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so stressful. Yeah, you almost have to like turn it off, you know, because it's almost like ADD. It's a form of ADD. You're going in another freaking direction, you know? Yeah, anything that I watch, I always like I have an eye for like I can see transitions. I can see, you know, when things are looped and I can go like, "Oh, that was a transition." People yeah. Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, even in some like big budget movies there's editing stuff that even my dumbass notices and i'm like what the fuck so anyway <laughs> what the hell with all those people you get a comedian what's that like um well i told him this the other day it was like a stoner thought because um i believe when you date a comedian the comedian should come with miranda rights like you know anything you say and do will be used against you in the in the name of comedy because i know that when we first started dating like ed was super sweet super cute and he was like i love you i will never put you in one of my sets 
And maybe less than like a month later, he was doing a show at the comedy store and he was like, so, hey, I wrote a joke about you. Tell me if it's OK. And then it oh just snowballed God. after that. I'm like, just use me for all the material you want. <laughs> but that's but what it's like. About it. Like you respect artists. So that's what's mm -hmm. totally cool. OK, so you I described you as tech services at the top mm -hmm. of the show. So that means you lay down an amazing Zoom show. You whisk the artists into one room, you keep the audience happy and show them videos in another room. It's a respectful situation for all. Can you describe to me something that is great about Zoom and a night of Zoom hell? Um, I would say something that is great with Zoom is it's accessible. It's accessible and if you really know the ins and outs about Zoom, like if you take the time to kind of dig into the settings, it's Play-Doh. You can make it anything you want it to be. Like, I'm, I mean, when the first couple weeks I was learning how to use Zoom, I saw something called a breakout room and immediately in my head, I was like a green room, a backstage area. That way people aren't awkwardly sitting there. Like the more you learn about Zoom, the more you can make it into whatever type of event you're trying to pull together. Now, the nightmare flip side of that is when people have no idea what's going on technological, like, techni like technically. Yeah. Like yeah. When, when you I have someone who's absolutely unfamiliar yeah. with Zoom or because people assume like, oh, I just hop on, I look at a screen, it's fine. When there's so many other variables that should be taken into consideration and most of the time when it is a nightmare it's because they hop in the zoom ready to go ready for action and then they have no idea what is actually going on and yeah. <laughs> how things should run and how things should look you know it's yeah like when they when they jump on and they're like whoa you know what i need a whole tutorial kind of thing right yeah and i mean whether you're like most people in the audience will figure it out like i can mute myself i can turn my camera off and i can be completely fine and just watch it other people you know they don't know how sensitive their phones can be you know even though they don't hear people shuffling around in the background you know an android can pick up and it'll sound like they're right behind them oh is and, that how an android is an android is more sensitive like i get you know, i'm a big old droid girl you know don't you know the Look at this. Andrews, Look at this Androids can yeah. be a little bit more sensitive, but iPhones are just as sensitive because they're, you know, they're phones. They're meant yeah. to pick up all the sounds. And sometimes people don't realize just how noisy their background can be. And it's just it all comes with experience of just doing these things and, you know, being aware of that. And most people are just blissfully ignorant you know <laughs> <laughs> well i don't blame them but we have had the deal and we have had to perfect it and we've had to provide good entertainment liar comedy one saturday a month it is not going away people we have our zoom following from all over america i ain't going anywhere and other um, countries yeah no, it was like different exactly like international oh, don't get me started on how hot some of these international guys are <laughs> What about Sick Folks of Cinema? Tell me about that. Sick Folks of Cinema. Uh, this is a podcast that I do with um, my lovely uh, co-hosts who are all comedians. Um, Keith Graber, who is also the co-founder of Liar Comedy. Heather Rogue. Uh, she's an amazing comedian. And Stefan Bowman. And he does another podcast called uh, um, Therapy of the Absurd. Yeah. Been on and. It. What we do is we just get together every week. We decide on a movie that we're going to watch. And then the next week we talk about it and give our feelings about the movie. And it's always interesting because we have such a diverse taste in horror movies. Like I think me and Stefan fall more into the category of like the, the I won't say silly like my, I really like campy horror movies. I love B horror movies. If I can get a good laugh or like, a, oh, that was weird and kooky. I like it. But Stefan is more like the traditional horror fan. Keith is, we still don't even know what type of movie Keith likes. Like he's just all over the place, but he has his own specific type. And Heather is more the artistic, I want to think type 
And so no matter what movie we watch, it could be the best horror movie or it could be just the worst of the worst. We all have a different take because we all look at it from different angles. That is really good for a podcast, though. Believe it's me, not. that is really good for a podcast <laughs> because I'll, just from being a guest on your podcast one time, yeah. I have been exposed to like, I want to see that movie. It was called the something. It was like dudes who got to get, I don't know, man, there was some movie with a lot of dudes in it, you know, and I was all about it. I was all about watching it as horror or, you know, porn, whatever it was. <laughs> we talked about it. So that was pretty cool. You're brilliant and funny. Like one time you got thrown yeah. on a shit show. Keith Graber, he hosts as we know, this improv show, one Saturday a month called Shit Show. Yep. And it's forcing comedians to do improv. And it's kind of mm -hmm. funny because comedians think they're too good to do improv. You know, we think we're too good or we think we're not improv and improv thinks they're too good to do stand up. So it's kind of cool that you just got thrown in this mix and you were hilarious and funny. Well, and thank you. I really you, tried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't have to try. It didn't look like you were trying. Like, how did you feel about doing that kind of improv and What's um it was it, the shit show was a lot of fun it was kind it was very very last minute to the point where it was like hey everybody kind of decided for me in who was on the shit show that day you included you were like stina should do it and i was yeah. like hey i'm here i'll do it like i was a theater minor so i mean i have experience with improv whether i'm good at it i don't no, but I mean, I liked you being on that show. I was not taking no for an answer. <laughs> yeah. And it was, I mean, nobody was, and it was a lot of fun. It was fun to kind of like take off the curtain and do something where people could actually see me and like how I know how I fit in with all of you lovely people you know <laughs> we, we love you and we like embraced you and you're so funny and so lovely and so like you were like Deborah she just said it best you're a natural you're a natural for any lineup I want to see you do a full on set of stand-up I want to see you do whatever your boyfriend's okay with because I just really love you guys <laughs> as a couple so much you know and I want all your needs to be met through that couplehood it's really good you know, it's really fucking good. It's cool you know, to date a comedian. It's a lot of fun. And it, I think it, it works between us because we are such creative people. And I mean, there was a whole stream, like there was a whole while there where Keith was like, you should do five minutes, like, just try it, just try it. And every once in a while, because I spend so much time with comedians at open mics three times a week, I'll sit there and I'll think of like little funny things it's and like try happen. to write, write them into bits. And I've never kind of pushed that boundary, but since I have a lot on my plate, I'm like, when it comes up, it'll come up and it'll probably be something else like the shit show where somebody calls me out and it's like, okay, I guess I can do a little something. Here I am. <laughs> Here I am being totally natural, polished, beautiful, already having a family. Here I am. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> what are some things that you would like to see develop either Zoom or live in 2021? <laughs> Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, one of the things that I would love to see that you can't really see unless you go to like an actual drag show, but I would love to see some sort of like, or some sort of drag and comedy, like stand up comedy, like merge together, because I am a huge fan of drag. I love drag. I I live and die for it. I love, you know, there's so many performers and they're so great. Like they have, like to be a drag queen, you have to be well-rounded. You have to be a jack of all trades. So I think that would be so much fun to see someone put drag and stand-up comedy together for a whole production and just make it solely on that. That would just be chef kiss for me. <laughs> I fucking love that. I really, you know, um, you worked for the Palm Springs Comedy Festival and shout out to pa Paul Cruz and oh, yeah. uh, Max Zegfeld. And I'm pronouncing their names wrong because I'm so drunk. I'm buzzed at this point. <laughs> the, the point of this fucking whole thing on YouTube is Sally Mullins, you know, day drinking, 
So why don't you tell us a little bit about the Palm Springs Comedy Festival and how great that was. Oh, Palm Springs was so much fun. Um, I got to meet so many people. I absolutely adored, you know, Max. I saw Max almost every single day. I worked with Max almost every single day. Same thing with Paul and uh, Rye Armstrong. Yeah. They were just, you know, if I had a question, because I had never done a whole entire festival, I had only done like single shows. And originally I was just supposed to do the your shows. Every time you had it, you know, because you had like four or five shows yeah. that week. So I was only there to run your shows. And then it kind of snowballed into, well, do you want to just tech service and help us with the whole festival? And we'll let you know when we need you sort of thing. But it was a, it was such a great for me. It was a great learning experience in how to roll with the punches as you're being punched. Yeah, because yeah. I am you and I we're Virgos. Yeah, you and I are very close, like Virgos, like your birthdays are very similar. So I like everything to be planned out, thought about. I want to know my escape plans, whether I have to escape or not. So when something like it was good for me to be like, well, we're just rolling with it. This is what you get. This is what happens. And it still turned out great. <laughs> that is what a Virgo Gemini cusp will do. Like, I, not Gemini cusp, my bad, but I'm like a Virgo monkey with Gemini rising. Supposedly, I'm, I'm a freaky Virgo that, like, applies this meticulous nature to handling everything. But you mm -hmm. are just so amazing. And so many people have hired you yeah. off of Liar's presentation of mm -hmm. their Zoom shows. And you can handle anything virtual. And when we come back, literally, you are also going to be a sought after talent in so many ways. And I just want to say that I sent this little gargoyle over to your house. <gasps> How is he doing? We have the same yes. fucking gargoyle, people. Yes. Or her boyfriend. I adore her talent. I adore <laughs> working with her. And how is Lonnie? Lonnie is great. He's chilling up on my altar and he keeps all of my crystals safe and my flowers. So he's doing his his job, you know, guarding my my protective space. So um, Lonnie's a G. He's he's a good he's a good little gargoyle. So as hot as she is on behalf of my boy Ed Rosgen, I'm just gonna say <laughs> chill, okay? Because she's in good hands. She's in good fucking hands. Where can we follow you and find you and be respectful and worship you? <laughs> you can find me um, on Instagram. It's a ghoulish Stina, like a little ghoul. I'm kind of spooky that way. So ghoulish Stina um, on Instagram. Nice. I believe it's actually the same thing on Twitter, but I don't use Twitter for anything but like stalking nowadays. <laughs> oh, I feel you. 